The Digital Scene Show is sponsored by NewMediaWebinars.com. Free how-to webinars for digital media creators taught by industry professionals. Check us out at NewMediaWebinars.com. Tim Smith, welcome to the Digital Scene Show here at NEB 2010. Yeah, it's a madhouse. It's crazy. It is crazy here. I feel like you're part of the family. I run into every every show I cover, you're there, right? It seems like we always get something to talk about each year. So you do. That's a good thing. And you're holding something really cool. Last time we spoke about the uh, 5D and the 1D, sure. and now you've got the new, what is it, the XF300 and 305. Yeah, it's a, it's a two more conventional cameras than the HDSLRs, which are still as hot as it gets. Um, but we're introducing here for specific markets more of a traditional camera, but probably, not a probably, the best traditional camera we've ever produced. Um, first off, we're using a whole brand new Kodak that was developed specifically for this camera by Canon, uh, which is a 50 megabit compression, 422 full 1920 by 1080 image, which is spectacular uh, by any stretch of the imagination. It's, it's great amazing. for a green screen if it's 422, right? It's 422, it's going to key in beautifully. Right. Um, it's going to be much easier to pull keys with with any kind of a 422. It's going to be about twice the color information that we've had, in, say, in an HDV environment, and 50 megabit compression. So it's a really clean image. Now it's a selectable compression too. You can also select 35, which is kind of a more traditional uh, selection, or you can go back to 25 and be in a similar compression that where where we were with HDV. Now, why would you want to go down in the compression? More time on the cards, depending on okay. shooting. Right. Maybe mixing with other medias. I mean, the camera we're shooting on here, I think, is, is let's say it's 35. Right. That you're shooting this interview with. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you shoot everything at 35 or so on. So it gives you that choice. Right, right, right. And what frame rates? Oh, frame rates are great. Um, there's obvi the obvious ones like 24p, 60i. It's also 1080 or 720. But it also has variable frame rates, so it'll get you over cranking and under cranking as well. So you get a lot of frame rate choices. I see. Okay, and then you said it uses compact flash? Yeah, CF cards. CF Just cards. like on our HDSLRs, you're now using CF cards, which are really uh, easily accessible, pretty cheap media, relatively yeah. speaking, to other formats like P2 or Memory Stick. They're really inexpensive media. I mean, I find myself in a shoot somewhere and I, I need a card, I could run into Walmart and pick up that kind of media. Yeah, definitely. So it's a great choice. So, um, any specific CF card speed wise? Yeah, we're still need? recommending the UDMAs. Uh, any card will actually go, but right. if you want to avoid any kind of artifacting or banding issues, the faster cards are always better. So, if you're UDMA certified, you're fine, ready to go. UDMA, and that'll do the under cranking and over cranking, Absolute, no problem. Absolutely. Yeah. I see. And then, and then, what is it transcoded into? In terms of what what file what file format? It's yeah. an MPEG recording. Okay. Um, it's a Canon Canon's version of an MPEG recording, which is an MPEG. Which is but a it's an MXF wrapper, right? Yes, yeah, all done in an MXF wrapper, which is going to allow you to edit on Final Cut and Avid and Edius and um, all the major editing platforms. You'll be able to take this right out of the gate. But with Final Cut, I think you need a plug-in or some it's sort coming, of update, yeah. right? Final, Final Cut's already announced that this will be. Um, release simultaneous with the release of the product. It's not I an see. upgrade to Final Cut, it's just another another plug-in, so it'll see it. Oh, I see, so, so but so. you need, so you could, you couldn't take it right now? I guess it's gonna be out? Well, sure, you could do now. You would have to run it through an intermediate to get it to an MX, to get Final Cut to see it. You just transcode it to like ProRes. Pro right. So you're still probably gonna transcode, but you'll be able to work directly with MX out, so. What's the difference between the 305 and the 300? You know, it's kind of simple. It's a, it's a, almost everything is the same except for HDSDI, gin lock, and a time code in and out. So if you're shooting multiple camera shoots, going into switchers, doing live events, and you need to lock those cameras, you want to do that. If you want to shoot to a file structure other than the internal one, you can do that through HDSDI. You know, it's it's a it's a basic. One is kind of delivered to the one man show. The other one is going to be for multiple camera use. Price difference between them? Sixty eight hundred dollars versus eight thousand. Sixteen hundred dollars. That's a pretty good price. Yeah, under eight under eight thousand is a great price. But the three oh three hundred at sixty eight hundred fifty megabit four two two compression. That's kind of a first. So will the image uh, of this one mix can be mixed and edited with the image of a let's say a 5D Mark II? Sure. Or, you know they're gonna they're gonna have two different looks obviously because of the size of the chip. This will have depth of field for miles, which in a sports environment or a news environment works wonderfully. Focusing on this as a snap. The 5D Mark II is more of a filmic looking camera with right. the larger sensors and the drop off from the from the larger chip. You can certainly cut between the two depending on the shot. Um, indoors with less light, much easier to match shots. Outdoors with lots of light, this is going to look more videoy than the than the 5D, which it depends on your application. Here's kind of a head and shoulders interview at a truck. We don't actually have to have 
you know, we're not looking for an Academy Award here. We're right. Some, so it's perfect for that kind of news kind of yeah, gathering sure. thing. So. And the size of the chip? One third inch. Three one third inch CMOS chips. And you guys um, went with one third. I'm sorry. What? You you guys went with the one third inch. Well, there's some advantages to one third. I mean, we've been living in a big chip world for a year now with this overwhelming demand for our five Ds. But still, one third inch chips are giving people um, greater focal lengths. So getting out to an 18 power zoom is really kind of contingent on having a smaller chip. And our sports people and our news people have been asking for you know longer lenses. So this will go 18. You know, one of the things I want to mention on the lens too is we've just redesigned this lens from any lens we've ever done before to offer a true manual focusing experience. You can repeat a focus on this every time, dead on, which is a it's a big change for us. How's that done? We've redesigned the front lens so you've got stops now on the lens. Oh. So I can go to five feet, six feet, Fantastic. eight feet, and so on, okay. and then get back to five feet. In the past, our focusing systems have been a continuous electronic system. Yeah. Now you still have that. We can go to the automotive if you want, but in manual, you've got repeatable stops now. So what's going to happen with the other, the older line, the XHA1? Well, they, you know what? They still have a place. We're talking about cameras, the uh, like tape, the like the, the A1S. Yeah. Tape still has a value, especially in high shoot ratio environments where tape is inexpensive and easy to get when and archival. So for a while, anyway, tape is still going to hang on. And the other thing is the price point. I mean, you can get into our HDV 25 megabit compression tape pieces for about four thousand dollars, and you got a hell of a camera. But so. I'm thinking that's the direction of the future for you. Oh, the world's certainly going tapeless. It's you going know, there. It's yeah. not there yet, and we don't want to exclude anybody sure. at this point. So we're going to offer both. If people want to find out more about it, Tim, where do they go? www.canonusa.com. All the stuff is posted now because we released it. You can get the specifications. You get a lot more information if you want. Tim, like always, relax on this show. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks. See you next year. Yep, definitely. You bet it.